Well, good morning. Tell somebody light has influence. Light has influence. Amen. It is good to see you. It is Sunday morning again. God has given you another Sunday morning. Are you thankful? Have you thanked him for the breath in your lungs today? Have you thanked him for your heart beating? Have you thanked him for the roof over your head and the people under your roof in your family? The friends you have? The work he's doing in your life? Amen. Let's go to Matthew chapter 20. First book of the New Testament, Matthew Man, I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all, if you hadn't been here on Wednesday night, you're missing out. We're in the book of Acts, and it is so, so good. That's my indirect way of saying, please come. <laughs> please come. It's Bible study. It's like hardcore Bible study. We need that. Ooh, there's a water. Matthew 20. Everybody there? Let me say this before I read. Physical Jesus on this earth, that work is finished. But his work is not finished. Okay? The gospel, the good news, is Jesus leaving heaven for our sake. He came to serve us in the greatest way that anyone could be served. He didn't come to be served, but he came to give his life for all of us. And if we would just accept that and believe that and cry out to him as Lord, as Savior, <clears throat> that's the juice. Look at it. Matthew 20, verse 28. Watch what he says. He says, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, he didn't come to be served, but he came to what, church? He came to serve and what? Give his life for, as a ransom for many. Okay, I want you to think about that just for a minute. So if he came to do that work right there, and he did that work because the last thing he said before he died, it is finished. Right? It is finished. What's finished? His work. Right? But they put him in the grave. He got up three days later. Can't keep a good God down. Hung around for another 40 days or so so that the apostles and everybody would know that he's the real deal. He wasn't lying. And then he saw him ascend to heaven. And before he ascended to heaven, he's like, all right, y'all. I'm going to send back my power. I'm going to send back my spirit, and y'all get busy. Don't sit around, hold hands, and just pass the time. He said what? He said to go. He said to go. Go to the ends of the earth, he said. As far as you go, wherever your area of influence, you go there and do what? Do work. Do what work? Do the work that he finished. But when he finished it, he just opened up a whole lot more work. Amen. What is that work? Now that us that know to what is true, now we are to take that work and to take that message of the gospel into any and all areas that we have influences over. Think about it. He came to serve, and now that he leaves, is, is, is nobody going to serve anymore? No. Whose time is it to serve? It's our time to serve. We are his, his hands and feet. So whether you go up in a hospital, whether you're at your house, at your job, in the schools, in the hallways, at the ball field, uh, at the Walmart, at the Target, wherever you go, listen, be that influence. Put in work. I know you're there to get some deodorant, right? But you may run across somebody that's getting some deodorant too. Smile. The good news smile. Amen? So my prayer today, this, this is going to be a heavy word today, and I pray that this word encourages 
It equips us, it challenges us, it confronts us, and it teaches us today. Do you know what the greatest teacher of the Bible is? The Bible itself. Let me give you this, this, this uh, we're going to go to Matthew 5. Go ahead and start going to Matthew 5, but I'm going to put this other verse on the screen for you if you're taking notes. I want you to, this, this, somebody needs to hear this. It comes out of Isaiah 28 as you go to Matthew 5. It comes out of Isaiah 28, and it says this in verse 9. I'm going to read it up to you off the screen. It, it asks this question. It says, who's going to teach knowledge? Who's going to teach knowledge? Where, 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 how, where do we get knowledge? How are we going to understand? How are we going to understand the message? Those that have been weaned off the milk, those that have been drawn, it's like a baby has been, has been basically fed, like, here we go. But when, 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 you, when you come up off that, when you start getting ready to grow, how do you grow? Where do you go? Look at verse 10. It says, precept must be upon precept. Okay? Follow it. Line upon line. What does it say? Here a little, there a little. What's he talking about? It's talking about thought upon thought, truth upon truth, God's word upon God's word, in his word, here a little, there a little. That's how we learn. That's why today in church, we're going to go from this mess, this verse, to this verse, to this verse. We're going to get a little here. We're going to get a little there. And it's like a pieces of puzzle that we put together and boom, we get what we're trying to learn today. And what we're learning today is this, that there's unfinished work. We're part of that work and we're part of light and that light has influence. Sound like something you want to look at? Let's go. Okay. Matthew 5, look at verse 14, 15. I didn't put 16 in, Miss Tina. Let's look at 16 as well. Can we do that? Okay. Here we go. You are. Now, who's he talking to? He's talking about those that will believe in Jesus. You are the light of the world. A city that's up on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do you try to hide a light and put it under a basket. But where do you put it? A lot of people don't have them lights just off in the corner down there somewhere on the ground. You ain't never seen just a bulb screwed into a socket and just laid over on the ground, do you? No, you got to get that thing up high. Think about where all the lights are in here right now in here. They're up high. They're up high. Why? Because you want that light to drench over us, right? Think about it. But, but, and I'm saying this because you need to make the connection. Is saying that we are the light of the world. Stay with me. So let your light shine. Tell your neighbor, let your light shine. Before who? Before who? Everybody. Men, women, folk. That they may see your, uh-oh, what you doing? You must be doing something good. Who are you doing it for? If you're doing it for the Lord, it's going to be a good work. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to turn and now, man, why are you doing this? Why are you different? I want to do what you're doing. And guess who gets the glory in that? The Father, Father God. He gets the glory. He, he gets the glory. By, I don't know about you, but, but I was watching people uh, when I was curious about Jesus and is it real and all that stuff. I was watching people that claimed to claim Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I was really watching them. Man, they were, they were really different. They were really different. They're smiling, and they're talking these things that I ain't never heard before. Uh, they, they carry themselves in a different way. And I'm like, man, I want to be like that. I'm tired of being an idiot like I am. You know, tired, tired of being so selfish like I was. They say, like, I want to be like them. I want to be like them. What did that end up doing? Well, I started trying to be like them. Guess who, guess who gave, got, got glory? God did, because just because I was wanting to kind of be what, do what they were doing, God got a hold to me and changed me as well. I remember the first time we went down to Highway 80, you know, and prepared a meal for those guys and those ladies down there. Man, they're coming through the line, and, man, we're handing out food. Like, the, 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 full, the, the wholeness that you feel, you know, doing that for people and helping people like that, just, it just really, just, it's, it's just a blessing, right? Yeah. 
It just, it, just, it just brings you joy. So what I'm saying is, why light? Why is God calling us light? Because light has what? Light has influence. Light has influence. You, you, anybody have any dark switches in your house? We got light switches, right? You don't have dark switches. There's something to that. Uh our twins, they turned 11 yesterday, by the way. They're 11. They say they're 11 team. Okay. And uh, anyway, so when they were born and they're getting where they run around, right? And so they had this little closet in their room in there. And, you know, when they could reach that light switch, they just... Right? So I went and got one of those covers. I'm like... There's, or I put tape on it. That didn't work, right? So then we, co- we cover it with, like, with a thing, like with a whole little cover. Like, but then we couldn't turn the light on. <laughs> but, but the closet was so small, but like you could just kind of like get some of that light in here, you know. Or you can go in there with your cell phone, look around, you know, to get what you needed out of it. It was like, but it showed me like how important that was. So when they got big enough to quit fooling with the light switch and, and, and killing the bug, I thought, I thought they was going to burn the house down. The, the breaker would go, you know. Had to go turn the breaker. Y'all leave the switch alone. But when they stopped leaving the switch alone, now we turn it on. You can see in the closet. One of the greatest things that God has ever done is put a light in a closet. Amen. Anybody got a window in your closet? That would be a good idea. Anyway, <laughs> you see what I'm saying is light has influence. Okay, so you think about what light does. It does two things. It provides, right, and it serves for those that want to see. Okay, a light will provide and it will, it, will, it, will, it will serve you. Light, like when you hit the switch, it goes to work. Let it soak in. We're the light of the world, right? The moment the switch is hit, light goes to work. What did light do? It lit up what you wanted to see. It provides light for the room. Please hear me. Please hear me. When I say that light has influence, there's, there's, a, there's a whole lot more to that. Light is a serve. It Light serves us, right? So put yourself in that situation. When you serve someone, you become valuable to them. True or false? When you, when you serve someone... You become valuable to them. If you're valuable to someone, then they have influence in your life. Trace that back. If you become valuable to someone by serving them, you have influence in their life. So the really the best way, and I know we probably got some some people in our family or, or some friends that we have, and we're like, no, we can't approach them like that. You know, here's what we got to do. We're going to have to come and, and how, how can I get their attention? How, how, can I, how can I get their attention? The best way to get someone's attention and the hardest of hard is to serve them. Because then you're going to become valuable and then you will have influence in their life. Now, we take that and twist that. When someone's no longer serving us and some, no one's any valuable in our life, we won't listen to them anymore. That ain't right. But I'm just telling you, if you want to have influence in someone's life, you serve them. Especially when it comes to the, to the message of Jesus. Okay, so watch this. Proverbs, Proverbs 20, verse 27. I'll put this on the screen. i got lots of scripture today. It says this. I don't, I've, I've never read this. Come across it on a high. I know I've read it, but I ain't never got it in here. You know what I'm saying? It says, the spirit of a man is the lamp of the, of the Lord. Now, when you go look up the word lamp in Hebrew... You're going to find the word candle. Hence, that's what you're smelling in here today. Right? You're going to find the word candle. Candle. Okay, listen to what it says. It says that the spirit of a man, the spirit, your spirit, you're made up in three. You Remember, you're a three-cylinder. Okay? You are a spirit that possesses a soul, a mind, a will, and emotion, and you live in a body or an earth suit. You're a three-cylinder. There's three parts of you. Just like God is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three parts. Right? Okay. Think about it. It says, the spirit of a man. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. 
When you surrender your spirit, who you are, to Jesus, we become useful to Jesus. Is that making any sense? We become useful to Jesus. So now picture yourself as a candle in the Lord's hands. What you say? Okay? What you who, What was that Pinocchio's daddy? Remember he had them night I don't know how they wear them nightcap thing. And you see him walking around with that little thing with a bend in it, got his thumb and stuff in it like this, got a candle in there, he walking around cuz he heard something. And that was Pinocchio and the cricket jumping around in there somewhere. <laughs> I just had that picture in my mind for some reason. But when he's walking through those rooms, you, you know, just like we do, we, we walk in a room. You know when the, when, the, when the power goes out, we got to go get the candles, you know, if there's no headlights. I got headlamps everywhere now. Anyway, we light up the room, and when we come in there, the, the kids is, ah, I can't see, I can't see, ah, ah, right? But you walk in there with a light, and they calm down. So I picture God walking in these dark rooms and using us and putting us in different places like that, like lighting up these rooms with us. Can you see that? I want somebody to hear me. Please listen to me. And I, this, may be, this may be for some of us today. There may be somebody in here right now, and you really need this, this word right here. Please hear me. God, in his perfectness, loves to put some of his brightest lights in the darkest places. Now let that soak in because... You, you may be wondering, I don't know why I'm working where I'm working right now. The Lord wants to put a light in that place. Why am I around these people right now? Because the Lord's wanting to put a light in that room. Why this person befriend me? <laughs> they need a light. You can think, Jesus is not, remember, Jesus' physical work is done. Yes, he's the light of the world. He, we, lit, we lit off him, right? He's, what is he going to have to do? Like, come on, somebody light up. Like, am I going to have to come down there myself? No, he's not going to do that. He sent us to light up the darkest places. So maybe, maybe you have, maybe God is either leaving you in a position or has put you in a position that you're not sure of. I can assure you this, he's wanting to light that place up. Yes, there's other reasons for you to be there, but the number one reason, light it up, light it up, light it up. Right? So that, that, that may, okay, what, what are you saying, Brother Scotty? Okay, God wants to use your heart. He wants to use your testimony in that space. Quit whining about it. That ain't easy. But here's the problem. The enemy has people carrying around fire extinguishers and buckets of water and blowing out our candles. In other words, once he puts you in that darkness, the darkness goes... Phew. I lit these candles this morning and you can show smell them one of them is apple joy day or something apple fritter and the other one is apple pumpkins come on somebody <laughs> I stole them from the house those are Cody's she probably don't like me burning them but they smell good but here's the thing light lighting a candle it's going to smell good. So there's two things about you being a light. You're going to smell good because you're a candle. We just read that you're a candle, right? We're candles. And you're going to light up the room. But if we allow the darkness, to, you know what I'm saying? Do that. Guess what's going to happen? There's no more light. We got two. Listen, here, 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 here we are burning. We're in a light room. You know, in, a, in the dark, we're trying to light it up, but we get offended. There went the light. And what else? There went the smell. Back to funky. <laughs> back, right? Back, <laughs> back to dark. Back to dark. And back to funky. Is this making any sense? 
You got, we got too many people walking around with fire extinguishers. And they're, and they're walking around with like buckets of water. And if, and if they can just get us offended, I mean, what? They, they, they basically got us, right? If they, get you to, if they get you to be bitter, they got you. And I think that's our problem these days is like when we don't choose to forgive somebody, what happens? Our light goes out. If we get offended, our light goes out. If we hold a grudge, the light goes out and the smell. But here's the thing. You do realize we can take a hit and keep on going. Right? Like, like it's out. What are we going to do now? What do we go? Oh, what you say? That person is lit lighting back up. Isn't that beautiful? Surely we can't. You stay. You quit that. And the fire extinguisher on that. And these ain't going to work. Watch, they ain't going to work. They ain't going to light back. See, what happened to them? They got offended. Okay? They got offended. But this, this guy right here, this young lady right here, offense comes her way. She actually done now. I blowed it out. out. These are cheap, man. I'm sorry. This, this. Y'all get the deal, though, right? Yeah. Last night when I was checking them out, I, and then I, like, I thought it was done. And, whoosh, that's perfect. Like we were down, but we wasn't out. Baby, we just kept fighting on. But you get the concept, right? Don't go to Walmart and get them. They don't work. <laughs> I went to Target. went to Walmart. Had some candles called Magic Candles. They weren't magic. Nothing. They might come on twice. Anyway, <laughs> y'all see what I'm saying? We need to be able to take a hit and keep on going. Y'all had the birthday candles. That's what I was looking for. You put them on there and shh, blow them out, blow them out. <sighs> and then you don't want to eat none of that cake. <laughs> Spit all up in them cake, right? <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Look at this. Let's go. Now, Now we're going to come back to Matthew, but let's go to Jeremiah 20. Go to your left, and I want you to look at this. But is that making any sense, though? He put some of his brightest lights in, his dark, in the darkest places. He will use you, and you're wondering, why am I there? Why am I there? And he wants to say, as the time is this, because right now is the time you need to be there. I need you in that spot. Because you have a testimony that someone needs to hear. Maybe you're in there and you, you've come out of an addiction, but they haven't. But guess what? You can help them out of their addiction. Maybe they just got a divorce. Maybe you've been through divorce. You're like, hey, I can tell you. Maybe their kids are acting a fool, and yours had acted a fool. You see what I'm saying? It's amazing. But guess what? We're never going to find out these things if we don't shine. Light has influence. Look at Jeremiah right here. I love this. This is just like them candles if they were to work right. Look at verse 9. Now, Jeremiah's a prophet, right? So here's what he said. He's been taking a lot of heat. He's, been, he's had so many reasons to be offended. He's taken a lot of heat from people who don't believe. Is that, is that you today? So watch what he says in verse 9. He says, I'm not even going to make mention of, of God. He's like, I'm, 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 just, I'm tired of the heat. I'm not going to make mention of God. I'm not going to make mention of him. I'm not even going to say his name anymore. Does that ever sound like you? Like you've taken so much heat. And you're like, you try to tell your friend, you try to tell your mama, you try to tell your dad, you try to tell your uncle, try, you try to, 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 you are taking heat for it. Maybe they even clown you. You're like, all right, I just ain't saying nothing else. I ain't saying nothing else. You're like a light switch that's been turned off. You're like a fire extinguisher just went, all right? But what did Jeremiah say? He said, but listen, his word. <clears throat> His word, his word was in my heart like a burning fire. What does it say? It's like it shut up in my bones. Mm, like ants in your pants. Like 
Mm. Like there, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Like, like then I can't speak Jesus. I ain't teaching anymore. I ain't saying it. I'm not doing anything. I just gonna hush. I'm gonna mind my own business. But you're sitting there and you hear people. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish I knew what to do. And you know what to do. Like you just been through that, and you're like, mm, 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 mm. you're like, ah. Why? <laughs> there you go, Dawson. It's shut up in your bone. You cannot not say something. Do you feel me? You're going to get to a place, you keep serving the Lord, you're going to get to a place where you can't not not say nothing. You have to say something. Well, notice what it says. He says, it shut up in my bones. He said, I was even weary of holding it back. He said, I could not even hold it back. I could not do this. Watch verse 10. I heard many mocking. There was fear on every side. They say we were reported. He says, all my acquaintance watched for my stumbling, saying perhaps he can be induced. Then that we will prevail, and then we'll take our revenge. You go read the rest of that sometime. I'm telling you right now, that's some good stuff right there. Let's just read verse 11. But the Lord, the Lord is with me as mighty and an awesome one. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and will not prevail. They will be greatly ashamed, and they will not prosper. Because why? Because it's shut up in your bones. You are called for a time as this. You are a light in a dark place. And light has influence. Go to Matthew 25. Matthew 25. And you may be saying, well, that's not me. Okay. Well, let's just think about just that, that, that for a minute. If you heard of a sale on brisket, and I mean you've been wanting some brisket, and you they were selling, they had too much. They were selling it for two dollars as much as you could take home. Uh huh. It's a deal you can't pass up. And you know, all your friends love brisket. Brisket sandwiches, you know, brisket tacos. Yeah. I mean, just, you can just play with brisket, right? And you didn't tell them, man, they'd be mad at you. If they came over and you, you opened your freezer to get something out of there and they saw all the brisket you had, right? Why didn't you tell me about the brisket? You know, or, 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 or you saw somebody's house on fire, your neighbor's house on fire when you got home today, but you just you didn't call 911 and you knew they were out of town. And you just let it burn to the ground. And you saw it, it was just a little fire right there. You could, you could have called Jeremy, man. He'll come, he would have come over there. I mean, and you, you do not call 911 with all the value that's in somebody's home and you don't call it and the, and the fire just started over here and you knew you could have saved the whole house everything that was there and you didn't how sad would it be so you're telling me you got the greatest news ever that our sin has been paid for by Jesus and we won't share that if we, we've got the key we literally have the key to knowing how to have peace now and joy we know where patience comes from, gentleness, right? We know where all this comes from. We know where self-control comes from. And not tell it, that's pretty selfish. Matthew 25, look at verse 1. Look at this parable. So the kingdom of heaven shall be like ten virgins who took their lamps, 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 their candles, and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, Five of them were fools. Those who were fools took their lamps, but they didn't take no oil. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Okay. Now, think about that. When there is no flame, there's no light, right? And if there's no oil, there's no fuel for the flame. All that's there is potential. You got a light. 
You got a wick. You got the candle. But you have no, no fuel for that candle, for that, that, that coal oil lamp. That's what I always think of when I read this. You got to have the oil in there because the oil is the fuel, right? Okay. Just like gas in your car. It takes gas to start your car and drive your car. Not break down right where White Oak goes to, comes into Gladewater in that low, what's that lake over there? Davernia? And not be right there broke down. Ask my wife. And she should have put gas. Yeah, see how far I can make it. We can do this. We can go. And then we, what was it, Friday night? Same thing. We, we come through the same place. And the light has been on. She said, I think we can make it. I said, if we break down and as hot as it is, I got there. We pulled up to the pump at Brookshire's in White Oak. And I put gas. I start putting gas in it. And there's there's 25-gallon tank in that car. <laughs> It took 23 and some change. We had less than two gallons. <laughs> anyway, no oil, right? No oil, no fuel. What is the fuel for your flame? What, what personally fuels you to continue to burn? That's the question. Like, like, for, like, what is it for you that really, 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 really gets you? Are, you? are you really concerned about people that don't know Jesus? Does that really fuel your fire? Does it, does it, does it, like me, like me, I really think about how can, when I really, when I really think about the cross and I think about the whipping post and I think about what Jesus physically went through for me, that's what fuels me. I don't see how he can allow them. He could have he called down legions of angels to take him out any time to, to, to get him out of that. But he, he hung on to that whipping post and was beaten so hard that his ribs were showing. His bones were showing. He was shredded. I mean, they took the, the cat of nine tails. It was leather straps with bone and rock and glass just all in it. And they would hit and it would stick and they would pull. And I'm sitting there going, wow, Lord, you did that for me. That's what fuels me. That, that's my fuel. What is your fuel today? Because see, here in this, this parable, all represents the spirit of God. The Spirit of God is the fuel. Remember, Jesus gave us His Spirit. His Spirit is the one who leads us, who, who, who shows us what purpose is. He's our comforter. He's our helper. And when we're full, when we have a full tank, when our, when our oil, is, oil is in our lamp, what are we doing? We're burning, baby. Conviction. We're, we're living by conviction. The Spirit of God is the one who convicts us, right? To get us, get us moving, to get us going. To tell us what not to do and tell us what to do, right? It's, it's, it just keeps us going. It gets us going. It gets us going. But if we don't have that, if we're not yielding our spirit to the spirit of God, then we have no oil in our lamp. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 19 tells us this. Do not quench the spirit. Real short verse. It says, do not quench the spirit. How can we quench the Spirit? That's like throwing buckets of water on the Spirit of God. How do we, quit, how do we, how do we really quench the Spirit? I, I would say something along these lines that we can ignore Him speaking to us. You, you know what I mean. And, I, and, I, and you know, we, we, we dealt with it yesterday. It was like, and you, it, if you're out on Saturday, you especially see this. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people out there holding signs asking to help. And I've watched stuff on that. I mean, that's people make $100,000 a year doing that. And I've always asked the Lord, you know, to please. I want to help as much as I can, but I want to help the right ones. And I know you're the same way. But quenching the spirit. When you know there's a real need and God is telling you to help. Isn't it, isn't it something how when we drive up and they're standing there holding the sign, all of a sudden we're worried about what's going on over here now. Right? We're looking over there. Not, a, not at them, but we're looking over there. All of a sudden we got a, a text we need to look at. Just all of a sudden, it, am, I, am I telling the truth? We're, we're looking at, we're, we, we, we're distracted over here. 
But, and that's what we do when the Lord is leading us. Some of us, we don't want to get out of it. We want, we're pretty selfish, and we don't want to do what he's asking us to do when he asks us to do it. And we're, we're acting like we're busy or we're doing other things. That's one way to quench the spirit. And again, again, I say, if, 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 when you run into people like that, you pray and say, Lord, is this legitimate? And if it is, can I help? He'll let you know when to help. Me and Austin walked by a guy laying on the ground Friday, counting pennies. He didn't ask for anything. And the Lord, as loud as we both, I didn't know what he was doing. He didn't know what I was doing. I got him some chicken. He got him a sandwich. <laughs> he got him some water. I got him a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> you know, it's like he, he walked out of there full, man. 30-year-old boy, had whiskers. His name was House. That was his name. Laying out there on the ground in Tyler on that hot concrete counting pennies because he wanted some water. But he didn't ask anybody for a thing. And the Lord said, help that man. Help that man. But how can we quench? We quench the spirit when we ignore his call. When, when, we, when we ignore, you know, I, I imagine there's people in this room that God's calling you to teach. God's calling you to, maybe you, you, you got some skill to play an instrument, to sing, whatever. And it's like, we're not using it. We're not using it. That's how we quench the spirit. When we neglect prayer, we neglect worship, we neglect Bible study, we ne neglect accountability. If we're easy offended, if we're easy to be bitter at somebody, we refuse to give all the stuff we've been talking about. That's how we quench the spirit. That's how the water gets thrown on us. We're fire extinguishers when we're like that instead of lights. Keep reading. Verse 5. While the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. But at midnight, there was a cry. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Let's go out to meet him. So the virgins, they got up and they trimmed their lamps. Well, why did they trim them lamps? Because they have more oil once they lit that wick again. They trimmed the, 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 the already fried part off. And that way, it lit right back up. They had their light again. Right? Verse 8 says, though the foolish said to the wise, Give me some of your oil, please. Our lamps have what? They gone out. Why did their lamps go out, guys? They was out of fuel. They didn't have any oil. What does the oil represent? The Spirit of God. They've, been, they've quenched the Spirit and not been listening to the Lord in their life. Are you making a connection there? So the, the wise would be listening to the Lord and listening to the Word. The foolish would be, mm -mm. They burn for a little bit, but then they burn out. But watch verse 9. The wise answer says, no, you ain't get none of this all. <laughs> Lest there not should be enough for us. But you go rather go, watch this, but go rather to those who sell, watch this word, and buy for yourself. Buy for yourself. Now we know in here you don't buy the Spirit of God. But what you got to do, here's what you got to realize. What happens when you buy? There's an exchange. You're exchanging money for what? Whatever you're wanting to buy. Okay, do you know how you can be filled with the Spirit of God and He would lead you? There's got to be an exchange. Think about that word exchange. There's got to be an exchange. Let's, let's go. Isaiah 61, right? Go over there. You can let that go. Isaiah 61. Let's look at this exchange right quick. Put these two together. Isaiah 61. Here's what we're talking about. If you want to shine, if you want to have influence, there's an exchange that needs to be made. You feel me? There's, there's, we've got to give something up that needs to be given up so we can shine the right way. You ready? Everybody there? Isaiah 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is up on me. Now, we're reading, this is a prophet, and he's prophesying of what Jesus is going to do when he comes. Right? Watch what he says about Jesus. He says, the Lord has anointed me. That's the, the, Jesus is anointed to do this. Preach good news, good tidings to the poor. He's sent Jesus to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Does that get you excited? And to open prison doors to those who were bound. Proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. In other words, bring salvation. 
right? To comfort all who are, who are mourning. Watch verse 3. This is what we're getting at. To give beauty for what? Ashes. You see the exchange? To give them beauty for acid, acid, ash, ashes. And to bring all of joy for what? Mourning. And the garment of praise in exchange for what? The spirit of heaviness. He goes on to say you can be called a, a righteous tree planted by the Lord. Patriot, okay, listen, listen to this. Think about it. Let's just think about the first one right there. Think about the first one. Let's just look at the first one. Beauty for ashes. If we're running around and we're, we're, we're setting down in our ashes the things that didn't work out, the things that have went wrong, the bad decisions we've made, and just life that has just not went our way, and if we just sulk and suck on that, and we just live in ashes everywhere you, you go around, you need lotion because you ashy. <laughs> How good a light is that going to make you? Not very good, huh? You, you walk in a room, what's going on? That's what somebody says to you. Oh, not much. You know, just things ain't going good right now. You know, this happened, this happened. All right, then, Lord bless you, you know? Okay, but what needs to happen? Yes, you've been through, you've had some hard knocks. You've been knocked down. And right here it says when Jesus comes, he makes an exchange. Free of charge, exchange. I take your ashes and I give you what? Beauty. So you can walk in a room and somebody says, what's going on? It's all good, baby. You come in beautiful. You come in lit and smelling good. What's smelling so good about you? Jesus and what he's done in your life. Think about it. Look at the next one. He says he gives you joy for your mourning instead of running around. And, 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 and again, things that have happened and, and you're down about things that have happened and you're down about your past and think bad decisions you've made. It says that he'll exchange that for joy. 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 This is so good, and I love the last one. I love the last one. This is so good. He will exchange at you a garment of praise for your spirit of heaviness. If you're, if you're burdened down all the time, and you're just barely making it to church, you're barely making it to work, you're barely making it to school, you can't keep your eyes open. This is not good. You can't shine like that. You're not going to have influence like that. You can't serve like that. Why? Because you're so beaten down. And I know you are beaten down. But Jesus says in Matthew 11 to come to me, those who are weary, those who are heavy. He said, make that exchange. He said, I'll give you rest. Give, give me that stuff. But no, we come in like this. Listen, you can come in with a garment of praise. I can imagine. I sky have these visions of this room right here with everybody up, everybody's hands up, cl clapping going all over the place, shouting the praise all over the place. You can't hardly hear this worship team for the praising going on. You know how that can happen? First of all, you got to get out of your own way. <sighs> Some people still ain't singing because they don't want anybody seeing them singing. Then they start singing, and then they won't let, raise a hand. or don't. And I know some people don't raise hands or whatever, but you worship how you want to worship. They just, they just I don't know how you can sit there. <laughs> this is just me, but I'm kind of out there, right? Like, I, like I, I want to run around sometime. I do that when the Cowboys score. I mean, I, yeah. Why can't we do that for Jesus? Why can't we do that? Man, you, you, Jesus has exchanged your garment, your spirit, your heavy, your brokenness and your heaviness. He's exchanged it for praise. And we'll give the cowboys that ain't done nothing for you more praise than Jesus. Is this making any sense to anybody today? He deserves all the praise. Listen, we need to make this house a house of praise and worship, a house to learn. A house where we can love on one another and be there for one another. That's what we need to make this place all about. And not just in here, out there. Just think about when you roll in tomorrow morning. Everybody else, Monday morning face, remember they got ashes. They ashy. 
right? Because you're walking, most of us is walking in a room with ashes. I'm serious. You're walking in a room with ashes. You, you, you're walking in a room with mourning. And you're walking in a room with heaviness. Guess what? God has put you in the place as light to bring the joy, to bring, right, the praise, to bring the beauty. They need to know it's available because when they know you as toe up from the floor up as they are, but you have a smile on your face, they can have it too. That's giving hope. And light has influence, church. That should stir us up. Quit giving your team more praise than Jesus. Come on, somebody. Mm, mm, mm. we got to have some fuel for our lamps. This is the fuel we need. What if you are the only Bible somebody any, ever, ever reads? You may be the only Jesus somebody ever sees. It's got to start with you. All right, let's go to 1 Samuel. I'm almost finished. 1 Samuel 3. Go to your left, 1 Samuel. Is this making sense? I think a coach right there, coach, coach out there, Damon, he, man, he, he's dealing with these kids, these football players. A lot of them have egos. A lot of them have ego legos. But listen, that man right there, a lot of them don't have daddies. A lot of them don't even know their daddies. And he'll walk into that weight room. He'll walk into that clubhouse. He'll walk in there. And what is he doing? He's bringing that joy. He's bringing that fire. He's bringing that lamp. He's bringing that candle in a dark place. They don't mean to be in a dark place. They've just been raised in a dark place. you got these young men that need to be shaped. And they need coach. That's why a coach is over at Pine Tree right now. 100%. I told they, they've been, that last year they had him in the booth. I said, you can't put a light in the booth. you got to put the light on the field. Now he's out there on the field this year. And what is he going to be doing? He's going, them kids are going to come, to the, and, and, and if they did something wrong, they didn't make the right move, he's going to look at them. He ain't going to get on to them. He ain't going to cuss them out. That ain't want to hear how he rolls. He's going to say, all right, listen, next time, let me encourage He encouraged him, pop the helmet, let's go. That's what he's going to do. Pop the helmet, let's go. Okay, what's he going to do? When somebody makes a good play, he's going to get down there with him. All, his whole body hurts. you got to talk to him. The man is hurting all the time. But he's going to get down there. He's going to do the chest mum. He's going to do the pop, pop. All that stuff. He going, he going, what are they going to do? He's going to get fired up with them. He's going to encourage them. And listen, they're going to start to grow a young man. Guess what happens? Guess what happens? Guess what happens? They'll come to him when stuff are going on. Hey, coach. Hey, coach. What do you think I should do? Oh, he was waiting on that one. He, that's, this is, he, you set it up. You set it up. You're valuable to them. You're serving them. You're pouring into them. You're teaching them. And when they need you, they're going to come to you. And there's the work right there. That's how you set it up. You build them up because they'll come to you. You become valuable in their life. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Guess what? There was, there were, he was going and picking up kids in the summer to bring them to the workouts. Who does that? I don't know anybody that does that. If they couldn't get there, they would have had to walk. He'd go get them. There you go. Coach Uber. So if y'all need a ride, call Coach. I hope this is making sense, y'all. If y'all bored, I'm sorry. Okay. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 2. You're going to see two people here, Eli and Samuel. Eli is the older man. He's been, he put in his work, but he done got old. He done got set in his ways. Samuel, the young man, the boy, he's full of vinegar. You feel what I'm saying? Verse 2, it came to pass at time, Eli was laying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow dim, and he could not see. What's happening to him? He's getting sleepy. And before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, and he says, here am I. Now, just think about this for a minute. Eli always kept that lamp burning in the church house, in the temple, okay? He's a priest. This is back in the, in the Old Testament. Levites were the priests, right? So you got the old man, and he's teaching the new man. 
You always keep a light. You don't let the church go dark is what he's saying. That's what, that's what in God's law, that's what he said. You keep, the, you keep it lit up in there, right? Yes. Okay. There's a seven branch candlestick in there and he wants it lit. He wants us to keep lit. Keep lit. Okay? It's done went out. Picture Eli laying over there. <laughs> Hurting. <laughs> Broke down. Oh, he looked up there. Don't you, take this and run with this. Have we got so? Have we? Are we like Eli now? You see a need, but you're like, and the Lord's asking you to get up and do something about it. Is this relating to anybody? Not worried about it. Is it Samuel on the other side? Because see, the Lord knew, knew Eli wasn't going to do anything. He spoke to Samuel. Samuel. Samuel didn't know Samuel. You're going to see, Samuel thought it was Eli calling him. He jumps up, here am I. He's ready to serve. You see the difference? He jumped, mm, what can I do, what can I do, what can I do? Trash on the floor. Ah, woo, right? So you need prayer? Ah, come here. Ready to serve. Lights out? Ooh, let me go get a bowl. Right? Y'all don't like me anymore. The Lord called to Samuel. He said, here am I. So he ran to Eli, verse 5. He said, here I am for you called me. He said, man, I didn't call you. Lay down. He went to lay down. See, him, see how fired up he is? Verse 6. Then the Lord called Samuel again because he didn't want the light to go out. He said, Samuel. Samuel rose up and went to Eli. He said, here I am. He said, I'm ready to serve. He answered, I didn't call you, my son. Go lay down. <laughs> why, why do you think the Lord's calling Samuel? He needs somebody to high up the light. Why do you think he's calling me and you today? Light's going out. We, we, the light can't go out. Church, the light can't go out. It can't go out. We can't let it go out. We can't let the church... Church, we can't let the dark win. You, let me read a prophecy to you right quick. It's in Isaiah 59, verse 21, and it spills over in, in Isaiah 60. I will read it on the screen for time's sake. And this is a prophecy. The Lord said, right? He said, my spirit is up on you, right? That's the oil for the lamp, right? He said, I put my words in your mouth. He said, they shouldn't depart from your mouth, nor you or your descendants. Don't let the word. He said, let the word be with you forevermore. Amen? Look at the next verse. So he tells us to what? We got the word. You got the fuel. You got the spirit. He says, arise and shine, for your light has come. Rise because the glory of the Lord is up on you. Okay? Keep reading. Because here, why? Why? Why are we doing this? Because darkness is going to cover the earth. Listen to this. Darkness is going to, not just darkness, but deep darkness, the people. In other words, the people are going to get dark. Are you seeing, are we seeing this now? He said, yes, there's going to be deep darkness over the people. But it says the Lord's going to rise up and his glory is going to be seen. Isn't this good? He's going to say, he's going to rise up, and his glory is going to be seen up on you. Look at the next verse. Then Gentiles, what is Gentiles? We learned this Wednesday night. Gentiles are unbelievers, people who believe in the wrong thing. It says they're going to come to your light. And it says even kings, even people with influence are going to come to you. I've been working down there watching for this company for 25 years. And it's amazing how the boss, the, I'm talking about the king boss, over the whole thing will drive down. And he's done this for the last 15 years or so. He will drive down there to me. And I'm down there dirty, washing stuff for him. And he'll drive down there as dirty as I am. Him get out of his nice vehicle. And he'll come and ask me for prayer. And them workers see him do that. Because I, I, he, he used to come down and he said, he said Brother Scott, you, you pray for me? I said, what you got? All right, thank you. Oh, and he'd drive off, driving the Escalade, black Escalade, pulling down there, talking to a nobody. he pull up, did that for years, and one day he got out because he's really going through something with his wife, really got out. He gets out. He said, man, would you pray for me right now? I said, yes. Right. <clears throat> one hand on him, you know. 
pray for it, Joker. Man, man, Lord, I caught it. And then he'd come down there once in a while. Now he just gets right out and he don't care what I got on. He'd give me a hug. Why? You got, you got, what do you say? Kings will come to the brightness, right? Kings, in other words, people and in influence will come to those that are shining a light. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm not trying to tell you. I'm a nobody. But I do have Jesus. And, that, that, and there must be a flicker of some kind. I'm just telling you, this is how it works. Because there's a deep darkness over the people. And they, he puts his lights in the brightest place. And need, a, need a bright light in a dark place. He don't, the Lord's not going to let the sun set without having another light ready. Listen, that's why Eli, he's just, he's, Eli's in darkness. Now, Eli's okay with the darkness. But he's calling to Samuel to rise up. Isn't it what he said? He says, he says, he says Samuel's going to rise up. Samuel is ready to serve. Samuel's ready to serve. What did he say in verse 6? The Lord called Samuel again. Samuel got up and said, Here I am. You called me again, didn't you, Eli? He said, I did not call you. Go lie down again. Now, if you keep reading that story, you'll find out. He said, Next time he come over there, he said, you better go, you better go say, Lord, who are you? You know, Lord, I'm here because that's the Lord calling you, boy. <laughs> go read the story. Seriously. It's good stuff. Real good stuff. So what I'm saying to you, if you're going to be a stick in the mud, God's going to send a Samuel. Lord, please don't ever let me be like that. Don't ever let me get set in my ways where I don't want to share your word anymore and I don't want to share hope. We have the message of hope, and we'll have it till the day we die. If you can't speak it anymore, you can write it. If you can't write it anymore, you can figure out a way to do it. <laughs> right? <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Let me do, give you two scriptures right here. 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. Here's one guy says that he fought the fight. This is Apostle Paul. He said, I fought the good fight. I fought the good fight. He says, I finished the race. I kept the faith. He kept the light burning. I love that. Isn't that good? He said, at, the end, at, the end of, at, at the end of his life, he said, man, I fought. I fought. And we know that. We read about Paul. We know where he came from. If Paul can be saved, anybody can be saved. But he said he kept the good fight. And he said he ran the race. He kept the faith. He kept the light burning. But then let me give you another one. You're going to want to write this one down. Galatians 5, verse 7 and 8. Notice what he said. You ran well. You ran well, my son. You ran, you ran well, young lady. But what hindered you from obeying the truth? What hindered you? Notice what he said. The persuasion does not come from him who calls you. In other words, you were running well. You were doing so good. But what hindered you? What is making you stop? What is the squirrel that has you going this way and that way? Here's what I'm saying to you. We need to refuse. This is a good note to write down. Let's refuse to be hindered. I'm, I'm going to say what that, that, that lady said we used to watch on YouTube. I ain't got time for that. Y'all remember that one? I ain't got time for that. Yeah, I ain't got time for that. Tell the devil, you ain't got time for that. Refuse to be hindered. It says you ran well. You were doing so good. Why would you check up? What's hindering you today? What's hindering you today? Look, let's keep reading. Verse 7. Or seven, 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 verse 7. Samuel did not know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. Verse 8, the Lord called Samuel again the third time. He rose up and went to Eli. He said, here I am. Did you call me? And Eli, Eli perceived that the boy said the Lord had called the boy. Watch verse 9. I don't want you to miss verse 9. Eli said to Samuel, go lay down, and it shall be if he calls you that you must say, speak, Lord. Oh, you ready? Your servant hears. Mm. Speak, Lord. Your servant hears. Samuel went and laid back down. The Lord came, stood, and called as other times, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel answered, Speak, Lord, your servant hears. Oh, man. He jumps up. He's eager. Eli's over there later. He, he's done with it. And I ain't going to be hard on him. 
But I'm just saying, you got one that's fired up now. We need to be the one that's fired up. Here's your, here I am, Lord. Your servant hears. Let me say this. I'm going to close. If God is not speaking to you right now, and he hadn't been speaking to you lately, it may be because there's not a servant's heart in you right now. He speaks to the servants because the servants are ready to serve. They're ready to shine. They're ready to bring the joy and the beauty. Right? They're ready to bring that. They're ready to bring the praise to the situation. They're ready to bring the good news to the situation. But if you don't have a servant's heart, maybe he's not talking right now. Because he knows there's no reason because you're just going to close your eyes and look the other way. I don't know. All right, Luke. Let's go to Luke, and we're closing right here. Luke 10. We're going to close on Luke 10 and Luke 14. Two real quick right here. Luke 10. Man, man, man. Y'all going to get on to me for preaching long? See, y'all get fired up. Then you, uh, All right, here we go. Luke 10. Look at verse 2. We read this last week. I just want to throw this one at you. Luke 10, verse 2, Jesus says, The harvest is truly great. The harvest is truly great. But the laborers are what? Few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. What does that mean? That means there's plenty of opportunity out there for light. If you had a garden and it was full of cotton or full of watermelons, you would have plenty. It's time to go pick them. But he's saying we don't have enough people to pick them. In other words, some of them are going to sit out there and rot. Isn't it sad that there's things that need to be picked because they're ripe, but there's no one there to help pick? Huh? Plenty of opportunity. I, I see it like this. God has a help wanted sign hanging off of the pearly gates. Maybe. Help wanted. Now, the job is not there. The job is here. I can remember I drove by a place, and I didn't realize, but it said people need, people, help needed to build bridges. I said, I was 19. I was like, let's go. I want to build a bridge. That'd be fun. Huh. <laughs> Went in. You know how you do. Got hired. I got hired on. This lady hired me right there on the spot. I said, let's go. Let's build bridges. She said, okay. The first one is an hour that way. You drive an hour that way in Morro Bay, Arkansas. We were doing away with a ferry that went across there, building a bridge. Show up tomorrow, 7 o'clock. Okay, I got to drive an hour, of work, hour to work now, <laughs> right? So I drive an hour to work. So what did you say? It's the same thing. Yeah, the, the help wanted sign was here, but the work was down there. Then they moved me to Hot Springs. Hot Springs is pretty. There's a help wanted sign, but the work is down here, right? The, help, the, 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 the work is down here. It's needed. Look at, look at Luke 14, verse 23, and that's it. I'm done. I'm going to pray. If you're mad at me right now, you may not be listening to the Lord. Like... Like, you look at his 12, whatever it is. He's like, he usually done by now. And then you shut me off about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I, you know, how does he know this? I used to sit out there. <laughs> Here it is. I know because y'all ready. I, here's, why I, here's why I know y'all ready to go. Because you're ready to go. You're ready to get to work, right? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, we've got it by now, Brother Scotty. <laughs> so here you go. I know you got it. Let me get you, give it to you again. <laughs> Luke 14, 23. The master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that way my house will be filled. 
If we did, I think there would be no empty chairs. We would have to knock this wall out, put chairs back there in that room. Right? We, we may even have to knock this. This thing's been here like to 1987. We didn't knock this down, just build one all across. We'll just park out in the street. Hmm? Let's go out to the highways. Let's, in other words, AKA, let's go to our jobs. Let's go to our Walmart. Let's go, let's go wherever, wherever you go, wherever you go, wherever your area of emphasis is. And let's shine a light because people are going to want, want what you got. It says they will see your good works, see your good deeds, and glorify your Father in heaven. Isn't that what he said? You put a light in you so you can shine. You ain't shining for you. If people start coming to you for you, shut that down. You've got to be this. Let me hook you up. Be the wingman. Like, he likes you. <laughs> I was always scared to talk to girls. I said, my buddy over there, tell her I like her. She pretty. That's, what, that's the way I'd roll back in the day. It didn't work. I had my mullet back then. <laughs> anyway, tell, tell them. This is good. This is good. It's a pre. Tell them he likes them. Don't scare them with love yet. Just say he likes you. If you would, bow your head. Ask the Lord, what, a, what does a highway, what is your highway? What is your hedge? Because when light sends you in the dark, again, it can be on your job. That could be a highway or hedge for you right there. And I'm not saying you got to bring them to church. I'm telling you, you need to tell them about what God has done in your life. I ain't telling you to get weird with them and start beating them over the head with a scripture. That is not effective. What you need to, what you, this is how you shine a light. You bring beauty into the room. You bring joy into the room. You bring praise into the room. You bring a smile into the room. Whatever the Lord, the Lord may have you to go get breakfast one more you know whatever it is bring somebody a sweet tea if they got sugar issues bring them unsweet right just some, just serve them serve them in the most gentle way you say well Lord uh, Scott, I'm, Scott, I'm broke listen the Lord will provide for you to get them a sweet tea or a smoothie whatever ice cream whatever whatever that just it, it builds relationship. Service builds relationship. Especially if you see them hurting. And here's what you can do. You can tell them that you were once lost. You were once blind. You were once hurt. You were once making horrible decisions. But the Lord has healed you and he set your feet upon a rock. That's the story. You don't have to beat them down with the, with the word. When they get hungry, hungry for the word, hungry for more, hey, put some word on them. But you got to start with your story. Nobody like, knows your story like you do. Nobody. And if you ask God to use you, he will. If you ask him to help you, he will. His word never returns void. And his help is always available. Father, I thank you that we are lights. That you lit us off of you, the true light. So, Lord, whatever is trying to extinguish us, throw water on us to blow us out, whatever is hindering us, Lord, I pray you show us and show us how to deal with it. We don't want to be just a flicker, Lord. We want to burn bright for you. 
I thank you that you think enough of us to let us shine for you. It's an honor to shine for you, Lord. It's an absolute honor to be able to stand and whisper and say, you have changed my life. I thought I was unsavable. I thought I had done too much. And I know better and I still make mistakes. But you say that grace covers it all. I just, I'm blown away by that. I'm blown away by your peace, Lord. And your joy, your grace and mercy and forgiveness. I'm blown away by that. I thank you that we can be a child of God. So, Lord, I pray right now for those in this room and those that may watch this or listen to this later. Those that are in the middle of bad decisions. Lord, that you would provide them with whatever they need. Whether it's another witness or a testimony, whether it's a a word from you or a situation or another light. To let them know the way out of that is you. That there is hope. And it's a guaranteed hope. So I pray for my brothers and sisters right now. That they know just from my story that you save, that you do exchange heaviness for praise. You do exchange beauty for ashes. Lord, fill our lamps up with your oil. Keep it a continuous flow so we can burn bright for you. We love you, Lord. We're humbled that you would even meet with us today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And this church said amen. amen. If you would stand. We're going to sing one more song, guys. And I always want you to know, I, I would love to pray with you if you need prayer. I mean, if you want to do it during this song, that'd be great. If not, I'll stay around and wait and we can talk, whatever we need to do. I just don't want you to leave not getting what you need. Always remember that. Maybe now you got that garment of praise on. Maybe you want to praise and do a little sing, a little thankfulness right now. That's great too. Maybe there's somebody here that you, you want to go encourage. Please do that. But I feel like you're fueled up now for the week. Well, at least till Wednesday. Amen. If you're troubled, heavy your head, come to Jesus and find your peace. If you're